and welcome, Acadiana. This evening we have with us the 2015 Mr. and Miss Martin Luther King, King and Queen, Miss Darrenay Prejean, and Miss Marquedrick Durrell, Mr. Marquedrick Durrell. Durrell. <laughs> and Carolyn Shelton, an etiquette expert, here this evening with us to give us some harness for us, us to travel with this on and on and on. Right, young people? Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little about yourself, Darren A. Well, my name is Darren A. Prejean. I am the 2015 Martin Luther King Queen. I am 17 years old, and I am from Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have time, and you just want to have enjoy with this. Yeah. Uh, my name is Marquise Durrell. I am the 2015 King Martin Luther King. I am from Lafayette, Louisiana. I attend Lafayette High School, and I'm 17 years old. Very well. And good evening, Ms. Shelton. How are you? Thank you very much, Brenda. I'm doing great. Good, good. Well, we want to talk about a little bit about the pageant that we just encountered. How do you feel to be king and queen? I love it. You love it? What do you love about it? Just everything. Everything mm. is still <laughs> up in the air. You're still on a high, right? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. King, how do you feel? I feel good. Uh, I take pictures with everybody. Like, it, it makes me feel more important than what I really am, but I feel good about it. Very good. Well, I mm -hmm. want to let the world know that y'all did a fantastic job in the pageant. Uh, just coming in to participate after doing this for 32 years. And uh, every year we get new young people into the program. But it's so much to learn. It's not just getting a, a crown. Uh, it's just not wearing a sash. It's more to being a king and a queen and representing Lafayette, Louisiana. As you become the king and queen, we have activity that goes on towards throughout the world. And you get invited to participate in such activities. So today, we're gonna have an etiquette class later on and uh, questions and answers are going to be told for y'all to be stuck in your mind. Uh, we're going to learn a lot with Miss Carolyn. Are y'all ready for that? Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> okay. Uh, Carolyn Shelton uh, is the author of several, several books. Uh, first one of them is Young, Gifted, and Classy, Motivation and Manners, and uh, more just about manners. There's more to that. Yes. Yes, and Manners on the Bayou, and she's going to get into that later on, later. And uh, I understand several people has endorsed you, like uh, Mayor Roach from Lake Charles. Yes, 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 yes. I lived in Lake Charles. I worked in Lake Charles, and uh, I've been doing these etiquette classes for the past, God, I oh guess you say, 30 plus years. Yes. And I'm still holding 25. I mean, I don't know how. I, mean, I know I'm aging, but I'm only 35 <laughs> years old, so... You figure it out. But anyway, long story <laughs> short, on my, on my days off from flying when I was a flight attendant for Continental Airlines many years ago, I saw a need to go back into the neighborhood and talk to our young people about manners. But I wanted to talk more than just manners, but I wanted to also give them motivation right. to do something, be something, and get, get, be empowered educationally. So on every Thursday I would have a free class. And these classes started growing rapidly. Uh, so then I ended up having classes all over the United States, also in a housing project, very controversial project called Cabrini Green. Right. Fast forward to 2015, I realized manners matter even more so 2015, and manners is relevant. And manners is so basic. It's just right. the basics. It's not, it's not holding your pinky up, and it's not, it's not being trying to be cute and snobbish. It's just the basics. Excuse me, yes. thank you, and please. It's being courteous. It's treating people the way you want to be treated. And it's also when you walk into a room, you want to walk into a room and people say, oh, that's, that's um, uh, what is your name? I'm Darinay. sorry. Darinay. Darinay. She is a well-mannered young lady. She right. carries herself so beautifully. And it's not about the Michael Kors dress, <laughs> the Michael Kors shoes. It's about you, your attitude. You can have on a crocus sack and be a lady. Right. You can have, you can, now, now, with the guys, you cannot, you do not have manners if I see you walk into a room with your pants and your, and your crack showing. Mm -hmm. That's out. Yes. So the bottom line is having respect. If you respect yourself, 
then automatically the world is going to respect you. And I like to tell young people <laughs> all the time that when I was a flight attendant, I, I, I came across a lot of celebrities. And one celebrity in particular who, is a, who happens to be a rapper, his name is Snoop Doggy Dog. Yes. I saw <laughs> Snoop Dogg the other day on uh, Queen Latifah's show. And I was amazed because when I met him, he was very mannerable, respectful. He gave me a recipe for his uh, uh, Grandma Tate's tea cakes. But let me tell you what I like about Snoop Dogg. With all the stuff that he does, he is very respectful and mannerable, and he is teaching his children today, and his, he has a new grandkid. He talked about manners being relevant and being respectful being relevant today, 2015. So the little things that I teach in my classes, I want you to become advocates, and I want you to become ambassadors for teaching your okay. sisters and brothers and going back to the neighborhood. And as you act, they will act. Correct. Something easy. That's not hard. You don't, you don't even need a degree for that, right? All right. And we practice uh, and we go over the rehearsal in our program when we eat to Bailey's. And we want to thank Bailey's for supplying this very good lunch, mm -hmm. supper that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> on the table or anywhere speaking, we don't have to talk loud. Because if I whisper, you can still hear me, Mark Hedrick? Yes, ma'am. See? There's no talking loud, even in the class. You don't have to talk loud. The teacher can hear you. Exactly. When she's at the desk, she can hear y'all whispering also. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and that goes everywhere. Ladies don't need to be talking loud. Not because you're a queen, because you are a young lady. That's right. And the guys, you don't have to yell at the girls. Call them by their name. Nah, hey, Shay, or come here, little mama. <laughs> oh, Lord, little mama, right. Oh, oh no, you want to you wanna get on my bad side, little mama. I, I, I tell them in a minute, I did not give birth to you. You are going to respect me. But then at the same time, the young ladies, you have to also dress and act so that the brothers can respect you. Yes. If you walk around sassy, mm -hmm. half of everything showing, then there's no respect. Right. And when those guys are ready for a wife, guess what? You ain't going to be the one. Sure. They're going to get somebody else that, 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 that wants something out of life. Okay. And you, you know, excuse me, say excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. me. Yes. Someone hands you something, you say, thank you. thank you. And then if you want something, say, please. Let's say that together. Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And please. And please. please. How much does that cost? Nothing. Nada. <laughs> Nada. Nada. So, so that's what I, my, my message is to teach you guys the basics. It starts in the, in the home. If you're not getting it in the home, then try to find someone that you admire and you try to emulate that person. It could be a teacher. It could be someone in the church. You can say, oh, that lady has class. And you just observe he or she and try to emulate being that person. You, if you live in the hood, you don't have to act like you live in the hood. If you live in the hood, you don't have to act rowdy and curse people out. And if you live in the hood, say to yourself, this is temporary. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be out of here soon. After I get my degree, I'm going to be out of here. And guess what? I'm going to leave, but I'm going to also come back and pull some people out. Right. You know, you don't, don't leave and don't come back. Yeah. You got to go back and pull. Pull them back, pull them out. Never forget where you came from. Never. They committed a lot. That's right. So that's very important. So in my classes, Brenda, uh, this is one of the books that I've, that I've uh, published. And it's Young, called, Gifted, and Classy. Yeah, is that... Is that Young, yes. can they say, yes. young, gifted, and classy, motivation and manners. And in, in, in my classes, I just wanted to show you, give you all a little, little snippet because this is only a, a short show. Uh, I have, um, just to give you an idea, um, the importance of writing thank you notes. They have a, we have a table setting in the book. Okay. And then uh, for another segment that I do, your job is waiting. People don't understand that just because you're going to get a job as a dishwasher, you don't have to look like you need to be bathed. You go <laughs> dressed properly, Correct. nails clean, good attitude. They say no, go to the next door until you get a yes. But you got to step to the plate looking like you want the job, not like somebody owe you the job. So mm -hmm. we talk about that in some of my classes. And then we talk about the position of the way you eat. You know, the way you eat properly, because let me tell you what happens. Sometimes uh, a potential em employer, you could be a college grad, just say, you know, um, Mr. Durrell, let's have lunch today. You're fresh out of college, and then you, he, uh, you order a steak, and you don't know how to eat because you weren't trained right. So now you got 
Oh, yeah, I want to stay. Then you're stabbing your food. You don't know. You're burping and you're throwing stuff all over the place. You don't know what to do. The, these classes are designed to teach you just the basics. Yes. The basics. And so we're going to go into that a little later. One last thing, uh, Brenda. I wanted to go um, over the, uh, the sessions that I have. And these classes are going to be offered here in Lafayette. I'm doing them already in New Orleans. Session one, etiquette begins at home. Session two, the fundamentals. Excuse me, thank me, and please. Public manners, telephone manners, you look good, how do you sound? You know, you might look good, and when you open, you might go, oh, my God, he, where, where was he or she trained? Mm -hmm. Okay, table manners. When you get to the table and you say, oh, my God, what do I do with all these forks? There's a whole method to learn how to eat properly. If you at a formal dinner and all of a sudden there's all these forks and all this stuff going on, there's a way to maneuver your way through that. Uh, eating difficult foods. Maybe, maybe there's something on the plate that you don't like. You don't let the host know. You just politely not eat it. Okay? Uh, toothpick etiquette. How many times have I seen people take, pull out a toothpick at the table, which is the worst? Yes. The worst. If you have a toothpick in your little pocket, I know you've seen Grandpa with it mm -hmm. and Uncle, Uncle Fred. Uh, <laughs> you, got, you got yours with you today? No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma you, you, you use your toothpick as you're leaving. You don't use it at the table because that is very, very, uh, it's not oh, hy yes. hygienic. Um, knowing when to slurp a burp. Hand me that spoon right there. Let me just show you something real quick. Let me hand me the soup. One of the things that we talk about in the class is eating soup. You'd be surprised. The only time that you can really cut up eating soup, which is a gumbo, is with gumbo. But this is a, a nice soup that I got from Chili's. It's an enchilada soup, or it could be a vegetable soup. The proper way, you don't learn nothing else today, the proper way to eat soup. You, do you know how? Yes, no ma'am. How do you eat soup? No. Okay. You want me to show you? We yes. get to learn. You always, you, and usually, have that spoon there. How do you know it's a soup spoon? It's always a size larger than a coffee spoon. So it's always a, a, has a bigger mouth like me. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. You always dip away like this. Always like this. When you've completed eating your soup, you never take your soup spoon and place it on the tablecloth. You place it on the side of the plate or you put it back in your bowl like that, okay? okay. So that's one of the things that you will, you will have learned today. Very now, good. Another little thing that we talk about is um, um, do's and don'ts at the table. When you first sit down at the table, I'm going to ask you. What is Darren A. Darren A. When you first sit down at the table, what is the first thing you do? Sit. Okay, you smart. sit. Then I smart. <laughs> That's a good one, Darren. Go. You Darin sit. A, at the table. When you first sit on the table, what is the first thing you do? Get your napkin. Yes, ma'am. Place it in your lap. Let me see if you know how to do that. Perfect. Give her a hand, you guys. Perfect. Place it in your lap. Uh, I'm gonna give you a test. Um, Mr. Darin. Darrell. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pass me the salt, please. Danny, can you hand me the salt, please? No, you... Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, pass me the pepper, please. Can you hand me the pepper, please? Okay. Now, I want you to send it back over there. And I'm going to give you a little tip. When you're at a formal dinner, or if you're in a restaurant, a nice restaurant, and if someone says, pass me the salt, this is what you do. You not like this. You pass both. You never separate the salt and pepper. Okay. So these are little things that you just don't know. You have to know. You always, you never separate the salt and pepper. Someone says, pass me the pepper. You, you do the salt and pepper. So says salt, same difference. You never separate the two. Very good. Yeah. Give her. Okay. All right, you guys. <laughs> now, because we only have one piece of bread, these are just some little tips. Right. I mean, my, my, my classes go deeper than this. Um, whenever you have, usually it's a roll. And uh, usually when you have a dinner, you have a roll. And some people will take that roll and go like this and butter it, the whole roll. 
butter dripping all mm -hmm. down the arm. That's not the wet, right way. Okay. You always take your roll, you break it in bite-sized pieces like this, and you and you have usually you have a little butter here, mm -hmm. and you butter as you eat. Butter as you eat. You never ever take that whole roll and eat it that way. You always take small bite-sized, break ball small bite-sized pieces and eat it that way. Now, because this is getting cold, when the waiter comes over, and the reason we're doing a thing on, on eating is because you guys are going to be traveling, you're ambassadors, and you're going to be in Selma, you might be in New York, you might go to the Academy Awards, oh, Ms. Winfrey might invite you all to the Academy Awards, who knows? And you're going to be around all kinds of people. You know what people pay attention to? Your manners. Yes. yes the way you eat. The way you eat. If you, do, if you eat like a heathen, they'll say, oh my God, where are these people from? You yeah. don't want that. Right. So, let us now talk about eating properly. Today, we have a steak, some potato, and a broccoli. You have chicken, chicken breast, broccoli, and potato. Now, what we're going to start off doing is I want you to proceed. We don't have a... Oh, let's talk about the table setting. This is normally your salad fork. It's, it's the smaller fork, okay? And usually, after you've eaten your salad, uh, the waiter or waitress will come and pick it up and, uh, and take it away. I drop it on the floor. What do I do? You drop pick your fork on the floor. Pick it up. You gonna pick it up? You drop the fork on the floor, what you gonna do? Call the waiter to get another one. Perfect answer. Very good. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. <laughs> you never reach down and touch the floor. You say, excuse me. You know, again, being polite. I dropped my fork. That's how you do that. Now, we're gonna eat your steak. I want you to show me how you would eat that steak. <clears throat> Please. Okay. I would take my knife. My fork. You left hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll hold it down like that. Mm -hmm. Cut nicely. Mm -hmm. Cut, cut, cut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then eat. There you go. Perfect. Now, <laughs> let me add, ah, perfect. Perfect. You've taken a class before. Yes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what did you learn about, you cut, you cut your steak. So what did you learn about doing that? What, what, did, what did they say about doing that? When you're cutting your steak, excuse me, make sure it's cut all the way through before you try to bite on it. Make sure you cut it all the way through mm -hmm. before picking it up to your mouth to eat. Fantastic. Now, why didn't you cut it up? Like some people I see, well, I'm not going to say it right now. So you did, you did it perfect. Let me see you eat your, let me see you eat your, and you got your, your, your utensils positioned correctly. You don't have them on the tablecloth. Uh, so now let me see you eat your potatoes. Now it's time to eat the potatoes. Perfect, perfect. Oh, okay. Very good, very good. Just give them a nice hand, you guys. Okay, Miss... Uh, Darinay. Darinay. Darinay, you have a wonderful piece of breast of chicken. Let me see you eat your chicken. How you would eat your chicken. And she picked up the right fork, because she knows that the other fork, of course, is her um, salad fork. Very good. Now let me tell you what you guys did that tells me that you guys have had, because I've had uh, adults that don't know this. You never ever take, uh, where is that salad fork? Let me show you. Sometimes people will take that steak and they cut it up in small little, little cubes. Mm -hmm. You cut as you eat. The and as that's you exactly eat. what you guys did. You cut as you eat. Now, one quick question. How do you tell the waiter that you finish your meal. The, the plate is empty. Let me grab this plate over here. The, the, the food is empty. You, fi you finish all the food. And here's a plate. You, you didn't finish your meal. So I want you to show me with this knife and fork how would you place it in the plate. No, no, no. Show me, show me how you would place it in your plate to let the waiter know that, you, that you're still eating. Okay, I will take my fork. What the utensils I was using. Place on top of the plate with my napkin over the plate and that's it. That you completed it? That, that you completed it or you That I completed it. That you've completed it. Okay, mm -hmm. so you would do it that way. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Well, one one mistake is you don't put you never put the napkin in the plate. Okay. You always take your dirty napkin and place it on the side. Long time ago, you, people did that. They wipe it and they just stick it. No, you put it on the you fold it and you put it on the side of your plate. That is correct. Now, how do you tell the waiter or waitress that you're still eating? I'm not sure. Do you know? <laughs> no, ma'am. Okay. The way you because okay, usually when you go to a restaurant. The waiter will come around, and it, what happens is that you do like this. It's like that. That means mm -hmm. I'm still eating. This tells them, you can do it this way too. I've completed my meal. And then when the waiter comes over and says, uh, may I take your plate, sir? What you gonna, uh, may I, uh, just say, I'm gonna say, may I take your plate, sir? What you gonna say? Not at the moment, I'm still eating. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say you finish. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, please. Um, yeah, yes, yes, please. Yes, please. And then you step back and you let them bring your, your you know, pick up your plate. Very good. You guys, you guys are awesome. Well, every year after the pageant or before the pageant, we have an etiquette class. Uh -huh. And for the last years, Bailey's has been very good to us. And Durrell has been there. Darren ain't missed good. it. But um, <laughs> they learn a lot. And yeah. you know what? I had an etiquette class in uh, New Orleans, and one of the most famous restaurant tours hosted twenty of eight of my kids at Brennan's Tableau. Yes. So there are people that care. Yes. Mm -hmm. And one person in particular that she blows my mind is Brenda. <laughs> Close to forty percent of America's black teenagers are jobless. For many of them, the future looks bleak. Carolyn Shelton faced the same problem growing up in the Houston ghetto. But she got out, and today she makes it her business to help others do the same. Interviewer Sylvia Chase found Carolyn Shelton at the Neighborhood Help Center in Houston, where every Wednesday afternoon, Ms. Shelton shares the secrets of her own success with children who are growing up the way she did, black and poor. I'm not trying to teach you to be white, okay? I'm not. But there are certain things you need to know when you get out there in the white world. I'm sorry, there are certain things. Most of us are brought up in an all-black environment. And a lot of times we get out there and we fail and we wonder why. <laughs> Carolyn offers her course free of charge. It's a course in pride and ambition. Anytime a young man in school says, hey, mama, you have to laugh on that one, right? <laughs> if he says, hey, mama, what, do you, what is your normal reaction? If I said, hey, mama, what's happening? I don't know. Would you speak back to him? Imagine. Well, don't. If you respond to the hey mama, he's going to keep on saying hey mama. If you respond to him hitting you on your behind, he's going to keep on doing that. But when he's ready to pick a wife, and when he's ready to have a lady, you will not be the one he will pick. You think so? Widowed at 19, Carolyn shook tragedy by joining up with Continental Airlines. 24L on your left hand side, sir. Okay. She hadn't applied for the job, just went along with a girlfriend who wanted to fly. Her friend was turned down, but Carolyn was hired. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome you aboard Continental Flight 950, nonstop for Houston. She was one of the industry's first black flight attendants. Who will help you with any of your needs? Don't let them know what we do back here, girl, because they'll never eat on this airplane again. <laughs> Don't they forget it. Most of the girls that I fly with were raised in families where they went to these little charm schools or they were taught in the home because they have the educated parent. They're taught now, you speak slowly and softly. You don't say, hey, John. You, you talk very quietly. You're taught to be polite. Say thank you and please. Oh, yeah, we sure. <laughs> you like the Monte Cristo or an omelet? You know, I like talking to business people. My ears are always open to things that they're saying. When they start warming up to me, I listen to what they're saying. And when they feel comfortable with me, they'll say things like, you know, Carolyn, why can't more black people be like you? I said, what do you mean? I said, I mean, I'm no different. Oh, yes, you are, I tell you. I wish I could hire more girls like you. Carolyn, where are they? And I stand there and I go, I can't answer that question. I'm told in the black community that, community that, they, that, that they are there and they can't find the jobs. And I hear it from over here, where are they? You came back into your community. What made you decide to do that? in my mother's community. 
there were a group of girls, rough, tough, popping gum, uh, like this, you know, I'm going, oh, wow. So I thought that would be a good idea, you know, to maybe form a little class on my own and just sort of expose them to some of the things I've been exposed to as much as I possibly can. Does anyone know how to eat a piece of bread? Yes. Huh, okay, well, let me see, I'm gonna get Octavia. Okay. Okay, you must take a piece of bread, take a piece of it off and put it in your hand, then take the butter and put and slide it on the bread, and then you eat it without just taking all the bread and just guff it in your mouth. If, if I was at your house and you poured me a nice little glass of wine, would you just put a teeny, teeny weeny bit in there? How would you pour that wine? Okay. Almost halfway. Right, why? Because you can smell it, it has a bouquet. Exactly. But now I saw this little girl in the store with shorts up to here, big behind, half of her behind is hanging out, uh, pink rollers in her head, cursing this little boy out. Now, I just couldn't believe it. And I'm not saying be a carbon copy of a white girl either. I'm not going, hi there, da 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 da, -da. But just be yourself. She bought um, plates and forks and knives and everything. She set it up one time and then we had to do it over. So she learned us how to do it because I didn't know nothing about it. And then we learned how to break the bread and all that. And she learns how to use the knife and the forks and everything right. Because I didn't know nothing. I didn't. She's, she learned just stuff that you, don't hardly, that you don't hardly know, and then you learn it when you get there. Because I don't know. I guess it gives you more confidence, huh? To let me know that I could do something that I didn't know how to do before. Do you uh, go out to dinner now and feel differently about it? Yeah. Because I sit there and I... <laughs> I did everything right. All this is new to me. This is new. You know, I knew it existed, but you know, I didn't thought it me. Me, Twinkle, would learn something like this. What's so important about learning this kind of thing? I don't know. Out here oh, in Houston, up, especially out in the black neighborhood, young ladies, they, do not, they don't have respect for themselves. And I feel, you know, somebody has to set an example. Someone, half the time the mother doesn't even care, so. It's best of all that we just, I mean, you know, just try and start out. Because we're getting, we're going, this is our society. Your mother doesn't teach you these things? No. Well. She does, but she, um, most of the time I'm gonna work. She has about, okay, she has about three different jobs. She goes to one about, she's a, a private duty nurse. She goes about seven to 11, then 11 to seven, and three to 11. She don't be home most of the time. And, you know, ain't nobody else I can learn from, so I come over here. What do they have in common with you? Most of them are from large families. Most, most of those girls have sisters and brothers younger than they are under them. Most of them have to leave school, sometimes miss school, to maybe take care of a sister and brother who has asthma or take care of a sister and brother who is sick because mother has got to go to work. And there's no such thing as taking them to a babysitter because there is no money. So one of the kids has to stay home, and I had to stay home many days from school. My attendance was very, very poor. Carolyn and her family lived for years on the wrong side of the tracks in the CUNY home projects. The only place her mother could afford was her husband left home. Carolyn took us back to the neighborhood where she grew up. It hurts me, too, sometimes I hear girls say, that most black people are on welfare and they drive Cadillacs and that kind of thing. When I grew up as a young girl, uh, my mother did not go on welfare. I got a job at 16 years old making ice cream cones. And mother will tell you I gave her half my paycheck. My mother is very down earth and she used to say, you know, Carolyn Ann, you know, I wish I could do better, but this is all. And for some reason, as a young girl, I never understood it. I was just, it was just beyond me that I was living there. It's not that I wanted to be more than what I really was. It's just that I wanted to be more. It's very, very hard to be positive and poor. My mother was making $5 as a maid, and she'd come home with that $5. I wish she could tell me how she made it on that $5. Carolyn's mother now earns a modest living babysitting. She moved from the projects, and her older children chip in to help pay the rent on her apartment. Angelina Mitchell invited Sylvia to lunch with Carolyn, her brother Michael, and sister Cheryl. Nine children is a lot. Right. Was Carolyn a help? Yes. 
<laughs> she really was. A lot of help. I used to take all of them and put them in the bathtub, and I'd have them lined up on the couch. <laughs> yes, the, would come, the house would be so clean. And, clean. and I just wanted Mother to see how clean the kids were. And I would have washed that day. Mother had this old ring of washing machine, and I used to wash all these clothes and hang them on the line, all the towels together, all the sheets together. I, I mean, I, everything had to be just right. You know, I'm, I'm a Virgo, and everything had to be just perfect, you know. Everything. <laughs> she was the second mother. <laughs> To all of them. To all the kids. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to cry Mama, about? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess we'll have to put on glasses in a minute. Oh, boy. Well, number one, I am, okay, I was raised mm -hmm. in what they call the, uh, a project kind mm -hmm. of, and for a long time I could not talk about it and I couldn't relate to the fact that I, I came out of this environment. And, uh, you know, joining the airlines, I was introduced to a different mm -hmm. lifestyle, and, and when I would come home, it was kind of hard for me to relate to this other life. And uh, like Mother said, I've always been aggressive. I've always said, Mother, one day I'm going to have this, one mother, mother, one day I'm going to have that. So I used to always promise myself that I was going to get out. And I never doubted for one minute I was getting out of the ghetto. Let me take a look at your script okay. here and see what you have uh, planned. Carolyn got out of the ghetto, but she has not abandoned it. In addition to flying full time, Carolyn regularly appears on Houston's public television program, Minority Report. She talks about personal etiquette. Smile, my dear. And I don't want them to have this, always have this sad sort of story. You know, we always got the sad story. You know, uh, know what this other side is like. At least know that there's some nice restaurants. At least know that there are plays and various cultural things that you can get involved in. Aside from doing the, the funky chicken or whatever dances we're doing. Know that there's ballet here for you. If you don't appreciate it, maybe your, your children, maybe you can expose your kids to these things. The girls that I teach, they're very, very young right now. And right now it's very positive to be black. But I think once they grow up and meet the job market, it's not going to be about being black. So it's going to be about being qualified. It's going to be about knowing how to apply for a job. It's going to be about knowing what to wear on that job interview. It's going to be about knowing the right things to say and in the, in, in the time to keep your mouth shut. And they don't teach you those things in school. But you know, you're teaching them. I'm teaching them. How many in this room work? Have you ever seen on an application the latest dancers? Have they ever asked you that question? <laughs> <laughs> Have they ever asked you that, Tina? If they give you a test, they're concerned about your vocabulary. And the only way you can increase your vocabulary is through reading. I think that they need to be inspired to pursue some of the opportunities that are available for them. You have to kick some doors down. And I don't mean just go in there and act a fool. But I'm just saying you don't stop at that first door. You go into the next one. You go into the next one. And you keep, you keep pushing those doors in until you get what you want. And that goes for the guys and the girls. Because nobody's going to give it to you, are they, Carolyn? right. Nobody's going to give you a thing. Please. I want everybody that's not a hostess or a host to leave. Yes, to Come on, you guys. And I try to give all of them responsibilities, you know. Those so, are your children. Those are my children. I can't believe it. It's so sweet. They really are. OK. Now, I want you to give everybody, uh, the adults, one napkin. I want you to serve either the Doritos or the cookies, and I always serve on the right. How do you feel at the end of one of these sessions? I feel good. I feel fantastic. I, just to see them running around and kick yeah, you know, I just, it's, 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 it elates me, you know. I plan to have classes all over the city of Houston. I plan to go to Louisiana, because there's definitely a problem in Louisiana. I plan to go a lot of places with these classes. Now, always serve on the right. Steady, Daryl. And don't do anything while you're doing okay. Now, make sure, now they should serve the adults first. Thank you. Take three. Okay. That's it. I love them. I really love them. They know it, too. Because you know something? Little kids are very honest, dear. You know, they don't waste their time. Mama, I don't want to go back over there with that lady. They would, they would tell you. They come back. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock on back. Right. Okay. Even if they act like ladies, two hours a day, 
That's good enough for me. When that little girl grows up, something's gonna snap. And she's gonna say, oh, I remember Michelle, and I gotta do this, and I gotta do that. He'll come back. <laughs>